Welcome to podcast episode three. Thanks very much for your support and for doing all the tweeting and the Facebooking, sharing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this podcast is now available on iTunes in case you're still watching on YouTube or if you're watching from the website. Uh, so uh, if you do have iTunes uh, on your Mac or PC or your iOS device, you can go on, uh, find me on the in the podcast directory. Just search for Sound Advice or uh, John W. Doyle and I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll see my familiar mug on the logo. So go and check that out. Today's podcast, we're going to be looking at some really important chords that you need to know, uh, which are your eight basic chords and a few other chords which I recommend learning because uh, they're, they're super important. And we're going to take a look at keys and try and understand a little bit about what keys do. Uh, so let's get cracking. The chords that I recommend you learn, I've made a worksheet which is on the website, so just below this video as usual on the website there's a, a worksheet which you can check out, and that's got the, the first eight chords uh, of the ones I'm about to show you. I'm not going to spend too long going through these because you can look at the worksheet. The worksheet's got diagrams and it's got, the chord, it's got the chord diagram and a picture so you can see exactly what I'm doing with my fingers. But basically the idea is that there's, uh, there's an E minor. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about technique before I get through in, into the chords. With all of these chords, you want to keep your, the palm of your hand parallel with the bottom of the guitar, so nice and flat like you're holding onto a plate, and you bend your fingers around, leaving enough room under here just for a pen, and then that gives you a nice clearance, and your thumb just drops on the back of the neck. You always want to use the tips of your fingers, and you want this last digit here, this last um, joint of your finger, to point straight into the front of the guitar, or to be perpendicular with the fingerboard of the guitar. So that's kind of the idea. So just a little bit on technique, and also try and get your fingers as close to the frets to your right hand side as you possibly can, that's going to make things sound loads better. So I'm just going to go through these chords uh, reasonably quickly to show you what they are. Uh, the first one I want you to learn is an E minor, that strums from the E string, you should ha now know what your strings are called through the, uh, the, le the last week's podcast. Uh, so I'm going to strum that from the E, that's the E minor. Uh, next we've got an E, which is, or an E major, which is having your first finger on the, on the G string as well. Next we have an A minor, which drums from the A string. Next we have an A, which drums from the A string also. Then a D minor, which drums from the D string. A D, which drums from the D string. And then the last two, we've got a C major, which drums from the, the A string. And we've got a G, which drums from the E string. Um, you'll probably have seen a few different ways of playing G. I always recommend using G playing with your little finger here, using the same two fingers as you used for C, but you're just moving those two fingers up to the E and the A string, dropping your little finger on, and that gives you a G. So those are the first eight of the basic open chords which I recommend. Uh, there's loads of stuff that you can do with those, but they include the five basic open positions, C, A, G, E, and D. Uh, that makes something called the caged system, C, A, G, E, D. I'm going to get into the caged system uh, probably in a couple of podcast time. Uh, so you really need to know those shapes as best you can because they're going to come in really, really handy. Uh, now the other chords that I recommend that you learn at the same time as doing these, um, there's an F chord, which is this chord here, this is an F major 7, and that's basically like a C, but you're dropping your second finger down to the G string and bringing your little finger in under your third finger, you strum that from the A string, and gives you an F major 7. You can use F major 7 as um, a substitute for an F, if you can't play an F chord, uh, you can use this instead. Um, it's, you know, it's a pleasant sounding sort of substitution, it's easier to finger quickly, so that's the way forward. And uh, the other thing that you can do with this is if you fancy you can hook your thumb over the top so that you get the F in the bass. So this is strumming it as normal from the A string, and then this is with the thumb over the top. Just gives you a little bit more body to the sound. Um, some guitar teachers don't like you putting your thumb over the top. We evolve thumbs, we might as well use them to play chords, it's kind of the way that I see it, so uh, get it done. So that's your F major 7. The next chord I want you to think about is a B minor. Now B minor is exactly the same fingering as F major 7, except we drop it down one string and move it up one fret. We're going to strum that from the D string, and that's going to give us a B minor. And again, you can use that in songs whenever it has, you know, when B minor comes up, you can drop that in. Uh, it's a nice little chord. Uh, there's also a B7, which is this little fella. So in order to do that, you could play an E. Um, and then swap your first and third fingers on the strings they're on, dropping your little finger on the second fret of the E string. That gives you a B7. And then the last chord we've got is one you're not going to use very often, but it's going to come in handy for the, uh, for the keys and for the theory. And this is a B diminished. Uh, and this goes like here, so... Not the nicest sounding chord. You'll notice as well that I'm only strumming the middle four strings. You don't want to strum the E string. You don't want to hear that. So you only want to hear those middle four. So that gives you your basic eight chords with the addition of an F, a B minor, a B7, and a B diminished. 
All of those are on the worksheets just under this video on the website, so um, click on that. And if you're watching in iTunes, there should be a link from the iTunes page to, the, uh, to my website, so you can just click on the podcast page and get the downloads. So that takes care of the chords. Now we'll move on to the keys. I think that understanding keys is one of the most important things that you can do as a guitarist, as far as theory is concerned. Lots of music theory doesn't really affect guitarists very much on a sort of day-to-day -day basis. But keys, every song that you play is in a key. Um, it might be quite far removed from the original key because there's been some chord changes, but generally speaking, if you listen to a lot of pop music, rock, metal, blues, all that stuff, it all boils down to keys. And it's really advisable to get yourself as familiar with keys as possible. And think of this as beginning the journey into understanding music theory, rather than, it's not, it's not a one fixed thing. You don't just do theory and then you know theory. It's like you start comprehending it more and you start recognising it more in the stuff that you're playing. So the way that I like to start my students thinking about theory is to think about the key of C major. And if you've learnt your scales from last week um, on the podcast last time, I had four basic scales. One of those was the A natural minor, which went like this. Very nice sounding scale it is too. If you miss those first two notes off and you start it with your little finger, that should sound pretty familiar. That's the major scale, that's a C major scale, which is the one that we're going to be using today. And uh, you get two octaves of the C major scale, which basically means you go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then it starts again from that C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and goes all the way through. So that's two octaves, that's all the way through the scale, and then all the way through the scale again. So. The way that I think about keys, a key is a deal, it's an arrangement. You basically say, we're going to write the melody of the song using those notes that are in the scale, and then we're going to play the accompaniment chords to the song, still only using those notes that are in the scale. So all of the chords that you make in the key are made up of the same notes as you used to make the melody, and the whole thing kind of does that and sounds really nice. You don't get any dodgy sounding notes, it all sounds, it all sounds very polite. So the first thing to do is, is really is to identify what the notes are in the key of C major. Now there's one chord for each note. And the order that the chords come in and, and whether they're major or minor and stuff is always the same. So if I just play through this, uh, this scale again, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to C, which is eight. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, an eight, okay? Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just giving each one of the, the notes a number at that point. So, the way that a key works is, there's seven different chords, um, numbers one through seven. The first, fourth and fifth of those chords are always major. So if I count through those now, C is number one, that's major, D, E, F is number four, that's major, and G is number five, that's major. So that gives us the first four chords of the key. We've got a C, we've got an F, got a G, okay? That's the major chords. Now the minor chords are numbers two, three, and six. So if we count through the key again, one, two is D, which means the first minor chords are D minor. Three is E, which means the first minor chords are an E minor. And then we've got F, which is four, G, which is five, and A, which is six. So D, E, and A are our minor chords, D minor, E minor, and A minor. So now in our key, if we play through it one chord at a time, we've got C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and that gives us all of our major and minor chords from the key. Now, there's going to be a worksheet on the website, which is going to have this laid out, maybe with a diagram or something, so that you can see it a little bit clearer. But this is basically what a key is in essence. You would use those six chords to write whichever tune you wanted. And you can probably take those six chords. As I'm going through those chords, I'll bet you were hearing things that sounded familiar from songs that you might know. So um, you'll hear stuff like a C, an F, a G, or an A minor. Just playing through the chords of the key, it sounds familiar. There's lots of familiar sounding songs in there. Now I haven't talked about the seventh note yet, which is B. Um, the seventh note of the major scale is the note before the root note of the major scale. So C is the root note because we're doing the C major scale. So the note before that is a B, and B is the seventh note. And the seventh note of the major scale, or the seventh chord of a major scale, is a diminished chord, which is this little fellow that we learned earlier. Bit of a nasty sounding fellow. Used quite a lot in blues. Um, if you've heard any sort of Gary Moore stuff, you sort of get that. kind of works. 
It's funny with a diminished chord, if you've got that B diminished, nothing else will do in its place. If you played a minor, it doesn't sound quite right. You need to have that diminished. And, and then it works. So, um, so that's the seven chords of a key. Um, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and diminished. Once you get the idea of a key like that in your head, things get a lot easier. When someone says to you now, what key is it in? That should now have a different meaning than it previously did. For example, uh, I, uh, I get this a lot with students where I talk to guys and I say, right, what's a key? And most people think that the key is the, the chord that the song starts on. Now, a lot of the time that works out to be true. If a song starts on G, there's a good chance it's going to be in G major. But it's not always true. Some songs start on a different number within the, uh, within the key. So you've got to be really aware of that. Now when someone says to you, we're playing a song in C major, that should mean something different to you. That should mean, right, I know what chords I can play. I know that I've got C major, F major, and G major, and I've got D minor, E minor, and A minor with a B diminished if a diminished chord comes up. So all of a sudden, when someone says, what, you know, it's in C major, you now know all of the chords that are most likely going to be in that song. Now, some songs will be written in, in uh, C major and have a little bit of what's called modulation. Modulation is where you change a note momentarily in the song. So you change a chord, you add a chord that's not in the key, and then you come back to being in the key again. It's called modulating. And um, there's a lot of famous songs that do this. John Lennon's Imagine does this most probably famously. Uh, the whole thing's in, in C. It's got C's and F's and, and A minors and D minors and G's. And then it gets to the chorus and goes F, G, C. Puts an E major, quite a famous kind of uh, chord change there, um, and then at the end has an F major and an F minor. So, a little bit of modulation there, but the whole crux of the song is still in C. The melody is still in C major. The chords, except for those two, which only just appear momentarily, are in C major. That's called modulating, a little bit of modulation, and you'll spot that as you go through songs. So, just to recap. Uh, because I know a lot of people struggle with getting into the idea of doing theory, and I really want this to be clear. The, uh, when someone says we're playing in a key, it's an arrangement. You're basically saying, I agree that we will use these notes of the major scale to play the melody, and we'll use those same notes to find the chords. And the way that we'll do that is, the, the first note, the fourth note, and the fifth note will have be major chords. The second, the third, and the sixth will be minor chords. The seventh will be a diminished chord. And when you know that order and you can play that scale, then you can find any key by, just by using the scale that we've got. Because you can move that scale along the guitar. So if it was in A major, you could put your little finger at A and play through that same shape. Name the notes as you go. And then you've basically found the major scale of, of A major. You've found you know, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and then back to A. So you get the scale of A major, and you could go through that, so you'd have A, D, and E as you on 4 and 5, where your major chords would be, and, and so on. So this is something that you can sit down and work with. If, if doing different keys confuses you, just get your head into doing it in C major to start with. Take your time, work through it really slowly, and make sure that you understand those basic principles. So the key is the major scale played as chords. The first, fourth, and fifth are always major. The second, third, and sixth are always minor and the seventh is always diminished. And that will give you the C major scale, and now you can get familiar with that. So that wraps up this week's podcast. Um, I really hope that the, that stuff helps you. Do take your time with the theory, and make sure that you've learned those chords first, so that you know you know that Danish chord and it doesn't come and spook you and stuff. Um, and that'll pretty much do. All right, so uh, this podcast is over. See you next week.